Hello, today I'd like to have a little play with some applique, but uh, it's, it's, so it's going to be fused applique, so I'm using a fusible web for, on the back of my fabrics that I'm applying, and I'm going to iron it in place, but I'm not, not actually going to stitch around it, I'm going to hold my shapes in place with my quilting, so fairly um, concentrated quilting. So I've got a couple of samples of little things here that I've made, a couple of small bags, and some of these shapes, are, as you can see, are really quite fiddly little shapes to applique around. It is, of course, possible, but sometimes we don't want to do that. So I've used, in both cases, I've used a variegated thread to do the quilting. But on this frog one here, I've done a little parallel, just a tiny little wiggly line. And all I've done is, is I've run it all the way up and down, all over the frog. And I've done exactly the same thing here with these ants, only I've used straight lines here. And then I've crisscrossed and done some straight lines the other way. And we have actually got ants going all the way around this bag because that's what ants do. Um, but I just thought it was quite cute. I really like the simplicity of sort of the design with, with just this nice um, threads on it. So today I'm going to show you another little aspect of doing that sort of thing. Uh, and so I'm just going to do something that I um, probably could, I don't know, make into a little wall hanging, I think. And... I've just got some little shapes here. They're all the same shape, just some different colours of them. And they've all got fusible web on the back of them. And I just thought it would be quite cute to lay it onto this fabric here. So on the back I've got some batting. It's um, the 80-20 um, cotton poly that Hobbs put out. And it's fusible, so I've fused it to my fabric and that's a really nice soft linen that I've got on top. Now I've cut it out 10 inches across by 12 inches tall. And the measurements kind of help me a little bit because I'm going to use some of that to help me position some of these. So I'm going to use my ruler to help me line some things up. I want to bring the ruler in three inches from the outside edge and I because I'm wanting some straight lines. So I'm going to lay some shapes on here. I quite like the idea of just some little shapes here. So and so in order to keep them straight, I'm just using the ruler, which I'm positioning with the lines on my board to help keep things straight. And I'm going to do a couple there and I'm going to pop a couple on the other side of that line as well. So I just switch the ruler over. And I can pop a couple of shapes down here. So what I was looking at, these are not quite semicircles, but they're close. And I just wanted them in a straight line, but not necessarily connected. And I'm going to lay them all out, and then I'm going to press them all in place. So I kind of have to make sure I don't move them. So I've come in three inches. Now I'm going to come into the centre, which is another two inches, because my piece was ten inches wide. piece on the other side of that line. So this is just a really fun little playing exercise. It wasn't really meant to mean anything, but I thought it would actually make quite a nice wall hanging. And so again, I'm coming in three inches from that edge. And then. So, so my lines will actually be approximately two inches apart with what I'm doing here. Um, and it's, it's kind of a little bit random. It's, it wasn't meant to be exact. And then I'm going to quilt over them. So I find that my cutting board is one of the most useful things with the ruler, even if I'm not cutting, to help me with all these sorts of little projects. So I'm just put a couple more bits on there. Come down here. And I think that's looking pretty good. I like it. And I'm going to be doing some quilting over that. So I'll just bring the iron over and carefully lift this onto my ironing board. And I'm going to press them in place. shouldn't move. All this fusible stuff that does make life a whole lot easier. And I'm going to um, do some quilting on that now. Just some straight line quilting, so nothing uh, fancy in that area, but, but 
a fair bit of it and I've got a very delicious looking thread in my machine here it's got this absolutely neon sort of bright green but it goes through into blue and there's a bit of purple and stuff in there too so it's a variegated thread it's a synthetic it'll be a rayon type thread I think um, and I just thought that would look great so underneath I've just got a regular cotton in the in my bobbin and you may want to just loosen your tension a touch you may need to put a different needle in your sewing machine sometimes these uh, round threads shred quite easily so you may want to uh, put in you can get a metafill needle which is great for metallic threads as well um, or a top stitching needle they just have a bigger eye a slightly more rounded shape so it doesn't shred the thread so much um, the other thing I might do before I started sewing because I want to do some straight lines is give myself a straight line to work against so again I'd come back with the ruler and I would line that up so that it's sitting quite straight I didn't necessarily want to start right down the center just slightly off maybe a quarter of an inch off or something and then I would just lift this and just fold it against that ruler and what that it's it's effectively like finger pressing I didn't want to draw a line or have a strong line there just one that I can see that I would start sewing on so then I would go to the sewing machine and just do a straight stitch straight down that line it's as simple as that and this variegated thread is just absolutely delicious on here All the way through right over those shapes that we've fused on Oops. and you can see how that thread is coming out but I'm actually going to show you rather than make you watch me do lots and lots of sewing I'll do a little bit more but I have actually done already a sample here where I've already done some of this the stitching so you can just see this variegated thread how it's just giving a, a real movement and a ripple to that so I'll do a couple more rows of stitching on here just so that you can see how it all comes together so what I'm using as a guide now because I've done that once you've done that center line you've got to come if you're wanting them to be an equal distance you need to have something that will help you measure that if you're not worried about that then of course you can just sew them any distance you like so what I've been using is the edge of my foot I've got a fairly large foot on here and I've just been using the edge of my foot as my guide for my next row of sewing. So I can just see the row of sewing down this side and I'm just going to sew right the way down. I'm going to take it out. I'm, I find it more convenient to sew just in the one direction so I'll just keep going and I'll just do another couple of rows nothing terribly hard about this technique just trying to keep straight is perhaps the hardest part and when you've got something to follow it's not that hard now, I was going to continue on all the way across on this piece, but I won't make you watch me do all that. But I thought it would be quite interesting if just occasionally, because I have done my, my sewing fairly evenly spaced, so just occasionally I put a line in between, just to give a little bit more interest. So no rhyme or reason, I'm not following um, a set number of rows apart, but I'll just come down, so I'm, I'm just going to do the same thing, the straight stitch, but halfway or near enough to halfway between two of those other lines of sewing so something like this could be um, quite time consuming to do but very satisfying in the end I'll do another one of those ones in between just so that you can see and I'll just come down through here so 
don't need to be making big projects all the time. I think this would be uh, fine as a little wall hanging. So you can see here how that extra line of thread just creates a little bit more interest and it just gives it a little bit of something. I'm really pleased with what I'm doing anyway. So it was really just an exercise to show you that you can use little fused shapes with quilting. Uh, perhaps not if you were going to be using something all the time because perhaps it could lift with some time but if it's going to be a project on a wall or even some bags and things um, I find that that is quite sufficient to hold it when it's fused on. So and there's such lovely threads around these days that you can just make something really very simple. All I had was just some little almost semicircles and a piece of fabric and and some of that thread and I just think that that's looking fantastic and really quite simple. So just a little idea for you. Thank you.